We love rock and roll. Well, it's hard not to, with its sexy, totally exhilarating backstory, and the way it continues to evolve and remain relevant. Almost 80 years after it burst onto the scene in the United States, the jury's still out on who actually invented it. The truth is, rock and roll is a mashup of genres that aligned at the perfect time, just as people emerged from the trauma of the Second World War craving a complete break from the recent past and with money to spend. What is rock music? Let's take a look at it in the next video. The history of rock music has been volatile and unpredictable as the genre has constantly redefined and reinvented itself since its emergence in the late 1940s. Not surprisingly, then, it can be difficult to apply a straightforward definition to such a restless musical format. But while people might quibble over specifics, rock music can generally be described as hard-edged music performed with electric guitars, bass, and drums and usually accompanied by lyrics sung by a vocalist. That sounds simple enough, but a closer look at the evolution of rock suggests how different styles and influences have shaped its development over the years. Rock music is a broad genre of popular music that originated as rock and roll in the United States in the late 1940s and early 1950s developing into a range of different styles in the mid-1960s and later, particularly in the USA and the United Kingdom. It has its roots in the 1940s and 1950s rock and roll, a style that drew directly from the blues and rhythm and blues genres of African-American music and from country music. Rock also drew strength from a number of other genres such as electric blues and folk and incorporated influences from jazz, classical, and other musical styles. Usually, 
rock is song-based music with a 44-time signature using a verse-chorus form, but the genre has become extremely diverse. Like pop music, lyrics often stress romantic love but also address a wide variety of other themes that are frequently social or political. Rock musicians in the mid-1960s began to advance the album ahead of the single as the dominant form of recorded music expression and consumption, with the Beatles at the forefront of this development. Their contributions lent the genre cultural legitimacy in the mainstream and initiated a rock-informed album era in the music industry for the next several decades. By the late 1960s, classic rock, period. A number of distinct rock music subgenres had emerged, including hybrids like blues rock, folk rock, country rock, southern rock, raga rock, and jazz rock, many of which contributed to the development of psychedelic rock, which was influenced by the countercultural psychedelic and hippie scene. New genres that emerged included progressive rock, which extended the artistic elements, glam rock, which highlighted showmanship and visual style and the diverse and enduring subgenre of heavy metal, which emphasized volume, power, and speed. In the second half of the 1970s, punk rock reacted by producing stripped-down, energetic social and political critiques. Punk was an influence in the 1980s on new wave, post-punk, and eventually alternative rock. From the 1990s, the alternative rock began to dominate rock music and break into the mainstream in the form of grunge, Britpop, and indie rock. Further fusion subgenres have since emerged, including pop punk, electronic rock, rap rock, and rap metal, as well as conscious attempts to revisit rock's history, including the garage rock, post-punk and techno-pop revivals in the 2000s. During the 1950s a new type of music called rock and roll emerged and revolutionized music tastes in America, especially among teenagers, and ever since then the music world changed. When it first emerged it was just the blues combined with electrical guitars. Later, it mixed the blues with country, western music, and gospel music. This type of rock music is called rockabilly a popular form of music originating in the southern U.S. in the 1950s by combining the elements of rock and roll with country music. However, the emergence of rock and roll is a long story. Back in the 1950s stereos were not invented and so people had to listen to their music on records. Another new form of technology that came around in the 1950s was the transistor radio and it became popular. Radios and cars started to become popular and at first, they were expensive but later the prices started to go down as they became more and more popular. Soon, radio stations started playing Joe Turner's song, Shake, Rattle, Roll On. The radio stations that played, White, music were very convinced that none of these kids would buy records from, Black, musicians and so they started looking for, White, musicians who would play music like R&B. Groups like Bill Haley and his Comets and solo acts like Elvis Presley and people who had a history with country music and told them to combine country music with R&B. The music they produced combined blue-based songs with catchy, fast, and exciting music that could be danced to, and soon the music they produced was known as rock and roll and so, the era of rock and roll began. Many people started to think that rock and roll was just a phase and that it would disappear soon many even started printing magazine articles about how rock and roll would be no more in a few years time but, they were all very wrong. The U's had already declared rock and roll the music of their generation and rock and roll had their own style of dressing and dancing. Also, musicians in the 1950s like Elvis Presley, Bill Haley, his Comets, 
and others had inspired other people everywhere and so more and more rock and roll musicians emerged in the 1960s with new ideas. In the early 1960s, girl groups and teen idols were in demand and so most women groups started to become popular and many bands had three women singing in harmony. Some popular women groups at this point in time were The Crystals, The Shangri Loss, and The Renettes. The Crystals had a hit song called He's a Rebel. However, this kind of group did not write their own songs and relied on their handlers to arrange recording sessions and produce records. The early 1960s were also dominated by instrumental surf groups like the Surferis, Dick Dale, and his Del Tones. Surf music is linked to the surf culture and is found in areas like Southern California. Surf music has two major forms, largely instrumental surf rock which includes electric guitars and saxophones playing as the main instrument in a harmony, and vocal surf pop which is usually ballads and dance music. Other than surf groups, R&B and soul music groups also performed but were not very popular due to their race and discrimination but during the later 1960s, these groups were starting to become acknowledged. Along with all white rock and roll artists being on top charts, musicians like the Motown, Stax, and Atlantic labels started to bring African American artists to the top of the charts as well. Also, in the early 1960s Elvis Presley, Roy Orbison, and the Everly Brothers, etc. had composed some hits. With a new era, came new technology, a lot of new technology. One of the most important forms of technology to become popular and cheaper than before at that time was the television. Rock bands are shown on television and teens being a large part of the television audience start liking this rock music and listening to it. American rock and roll continued to top the charts until 1963. It was in 1963 that the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy had been assassinated in Texas, and Texas was involved in a war with Vietnam. It was during this time that the African Americans were finding it hard to have their civil rights. That caused folk music to be known. Musicians like Bob Dylan, Joan Baez and Dio Detta thought that they could change the world with their folk music and so tried to make that happen. Also, because of the lack of songs and bands in America at this time, a lot of American youth had started to draw themselves out of rock and roll, that was until the British started to come into the big picture of the music world. This was the time the British and Americans shared the top charts. British bands like The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, The Kinks, and more. This was also the time when rock and roll came to an end and the era of rock music began. The Beatles were the first British band to be known in the United States and many people call the day the Beatles landed in the LaGuardia Airport, on the 7th of February 1964, the British Invasion. The Beatles were a very popular band and their sounds and attitudes changed every piece of music that came afterward. Even now when kids listen to music, many of them are unknowingly humming English tunes. After the British Invasion, Almost all older American bands were demolished except the Beach Boys, Four Seasons. New American bands started to pop up. These bands started copying the British style of music and started to believe that they are British by acting the part. For example, bands like Knickerbockers, Bo Brummels, Buckinghams, Sir Douglas Quintet, and Turtles. The music now had harmony, often had rhyme and it was very catchy so catchy that it became an addiction. British music was often funny and could be about love etc. The music not only brought joy to the country, it also started to make black music popular within the country due to similarities in music. In 1965, a folk festival was held and many artists showed up to perform. Bob Dylan performed with an electric guitar and the birds had their first hit. 
From this day onwards the most spectacular changes occurred to rock music and more people became interested in rock music. The easiest way to differentiate between this music and older music is just to listen to it. Older music was more energetic and fun and very exciting. This more friendly music had been changed into more studio-oriented music and contained more serious topics like politics. In 1966, the Beatles stopped touring and the Beach Boys came up with a new album called, Pet Sounds. The songs were not friendly like before and were about drugs, and had strange sound effects. In 1967, Robert Kennedy and Martin Luther King were assassinated and matters in the United States were becoming worse. Students were rioting. The war on poverty was nowhere near one and the civil rights movement gave up its non-violence movement. Matters in America were not good. Rock music was no more about drugs and people stopped experimenting but the topic of music became angrier. Credence Clearwater Revival was now the most successful rock group with its two hit songs called Green River and Proud Mary. These songs were all about the protests and matters in America. Credence Clearwater Revival also released a song based on the war between the United States and Vietnam called Fortunate Son. Even Elvis Presley and The Supremes composed songs about the protests. Unfortunately, the Yardbirds broke up but to replace the sorrow of the Yardbirds, a new band called Led Zeppelin was formed. In 1969, two major rock festivals were held. One was called Woodstock, which was held in August, and one was called Altamont, which was held in December. A lot of people turned up for both festivals and during December, the Rolling Stones, a British hard rock band were on tour and they performed at the festival. The Rolling Stones along with the Beatles were part of the British invasion and Rolling Stones made sure that rhythm and blues were a major part of rock. The hippie movement of the late 1960s in the United States, tied up with Vietnam War service and anti-Vietnam War protests, the civil rights movement, and sexual liberation, fed back into the British rock scene. The Beatles made the move from pop to rock on their 1967 album, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, symbolically identifies with the new hippie era. While bands such as Pink Floyd and Cream, Clapton's band, set new standards of musical skill and technical imagination. This was the setting in which Hendrix became the rock musician's rock musician. He was a model not just in his virtuosity and inventiveness as a musician but also in his stardom and his commercial charisma. By the end of the 1960s the great paradox of rock had become apparent. Rock musicians' commitment to artistic integrity, their disdain for chart popularity, was bringing them unprecedented wealth. Sales of rock albums and concert tickets reached levels never before seen in popular music. And, as the new musical ideology was being articulated in magazines such as Rolling Stone, it was being commercially packaged by emergent record companies such as Warner Brothers in the United States and Ireland in Britain. Rock fed both off and into hippie rebellion, as celebrated by the Woodstock Festival of 1969, and it fed both off and into a buoyant new music business, also celebrated by Woodstock. This music and audience were now where the money lay. The Woodstock musicians seemed to have tapped into an insatiable demand, whether for progressive, rock and formal experiment, heavy metal and a bass-driven blast of high-volume blues, or singer-songwriters and sensitive self-exploration. The 1960s brought out a lot of different styles of rock music such as punk rock, heavy metal, and many more. By the 1970s, rock and roll was over a long time ago and rock was born mainly due to the British invasion. 
rock and roll had progressed a lot since it was born but with the beginning of a new era in the 1970s, rock music progressed and turned into something different. In the early 1970s, rock music had turned into relaxed music and music you could dance to. By this time, the war between the United States and Vietnam had ended and so people became more relaxed and with more relaxed people comes more relaxed music. People wanted places they could just enjoy themselves and that is the reason that dance music kicked in. This dance music was known as disco music and disco music was very popular throughout this whole decade. It was influenced by soul and funk music. Disco music often included the use of keyboards, horns, percussion, and orchestra strings. Disco even influenced the movie industry to create a disco movie in 1977 starring John Travolta. This era in rock music was a very complicated era as rock music broke into many kinds of rock. Rock music broke into punk rock, hard rock, progressive rock, soft rock, pop, urban, R&B rock funk, heartland rock, glam rock, southern rock, country rock, blues rock, hip-hop, and more. With all these new kinds of rock music come a lot of options. People can choose what kind of rock they want to listen to and bands and artists can choose as well. Along with a new era also comes new technology. Music corporations started to flourish due to music and making profits. 8-track tapes and cassettes were introduced in the late 1960s but became popular in the 1970s. By 1975, sales of pre-recorded tapes accounted for almost one-third of all music sales in the United States. Since the recording companies introduced a lot of new choices to their customers, new kinds of rock music developed. Also, Car stereos and FM radios became more popular and FM radio was a very popular medium to listen to rock music. The FM radios only played the top 40 songs on the hit list and so if any rock artist wanted their songs to be heard on FM radio, they had to make sure the song was a hit and would make the top 40 list. This diversity of music distribution channels, along with an expanding market allows for a wide variety of new rock styles to emerge. Bands that had formed in the 1960s became more popular in the 1970s. Bands like Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Rolling Stones, Deep Purple, The Grand Funk, and The Who. Led Zeppelin had created a perfect blend of hard rock and the blues to create a sound of their own. They impacted this era greatly but along with these bands, New bands that had formed in the 1970s had also been very influential. Bands such as The Eagles, Queen, and David Bowie. New genres are beginning to use the greatest commercial success, primarily glam rock and hard rock. The first hard rock album is considered the debut album of Led Zeppelin's 1969. On this album that the group finally went beyond the limits of heavy blues and brought such music to a fundamentally new level. Led Zeppelin was characterized by an extremely high level of performing skills. Bass by John Paul Jones and virtuoso guitars by Jimmy Page, dramatic vocals by Robert Plant, and powerful drums by John Bonham. In the future, Led Zeppelin often experimented, introducing elements of classical music, folk, funk, and reggae into their music. The other famous band of the genre was Black Sabbath. Their music differed from Led Zeppelin in darker, more viscous riffs and infernal themes of lyrics, which ultimately influenced the formation of stoner rock and heavy metal, to a lesser extent, doom metal in the 1980s, as well as alternative and grunge rock. Over time, more groups began to make attempts to complicate the structure of compositions, melodic construction, duration, and arrangements, to build music according to the canons of classical music. The poetry of progressive rock groups began to gravitate towards fantastic or philosophical themes. Often it opposed the singing of the ideals of brotherhood and love, which was already irrelevant to rock music, in favor of dark, hard themes. In the 70s, Pink Floyd moved away from psychedelic rock, 
recording several reference albums in the style of melodic, meditative, progressive rock. Pink Floyd indirectly became one of the founders of the genre space rock, unearthly, space rock music. Another branch of the growth of progressive rock was the group Genesis, whose complex compositions, epic lyrics, and special attention to the content of the lyrics served as the main source of inspiration for the neo-prog groups in the 1980s, Jethro Tull, folk rock and progressive rock artists, in the 1973 year. Yes, was one of the most significant groups of the direction which was characterized by dynamic contrasts and an unusually high level of performing skills of all participants. Music by Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, who often worked on classical music, along with Yes, who were characterized by fast, technically complex parts. Symphorock became a special subgenre, in which violins and strings were added to the traditional composition of a rock band. The band's King Crimson, Capa, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, and Yes worked in this genre. The most famous team of the direction was the Electric Light Orchestra, Light Music, to which they switched later, is called Symphonic Pop. In 1974 to 1976, progressive rock achieved its greatest commercial success. In the mid-1970s, rock music began an entirely new revolution. A punk rock revolution. Punk rock became extremely popular in the mid-1970s. Punk music is loud and angry, it has its own style and subculture. The main instruments of punk music were the guitar and drums, as well as singing, vocals. Punk bands were different from most bands. They wore their own unique clothes, had their own unique hairstyles, and usually acted quite rebelliously. Popular punk bands include the Ramones, the Clash, and the Sex Pistols. Songs written by these bands were often up-tempo and dealt with political issues. These punk bands influenced many people who influenced the music that took shape in the future. The era of the 1980s began with a heartbreaking event. John Lennon, former member of the Beatles, was shot dead by a fan just as he was coming out with a new album. By the early 1980s, disco music had died and a void had formed. Sales have plummeted as viewers who were teenagers in the 60s are now adults. Record and music companies had to shed approximately 2,000 employees to keep from going broke. Mainstream rock began to become obsolete, and subgenres continued to dominate the public's attention. In the 1980s, many genres continued and many were born. These were rap, hip-hop, R&B, urban, pop, new wave, electronica, heavy metal, glam metal, rockabilly revival, punk, hardcore alternative rock, etc. Of course, along with a new era, new genres, and new events come with new technologies. The first major change in the 1980s was the use of CDs. CDs were much smaller than LPs and could store a lot more than LPs. Even though CDs were introduced, 8-track tapes were still very common. Another invention of the 80s was the player. Walkmans were the iPods of the 80s. Teenagers walked with them and listened to music on the go. It was a big uplift for music. Now teenagers could listen to music anywhere. We also have to thank the 80s for the invention of the personal computer and the VCR. Finally. The most important application of technology was the invention of cable television. Although the quality was not as good as it is today, cable TV made it possible to have multiple TV channels instead of just one. New Wave and Synthpop were very popular genres of rock music at the time, and they were also new. It was very similar to punk rock, but instead of being full of rage towards the government, they were anti corporated New wave music had pop sounds and very unique lyrics. New wave music was also influenced by funk and disco. 
Several new wave artists include The Police, The Duran Duran, and The B-52. The 1980s era also enjoyed harder styles of music. Bands like Def Leppard, Guns N' Roses, Aerosmith, etc. The 80s were also famous for glam rock. Glam rock was rock in which people expressed themselves. You could tell if someone belongs to a glam rock band just by looking at their hair. Their hair would be very weird and splattered with tons of hairspray, some even covering their faces with makeup. Several glam rock artists were Alice Cooper, Aerosmith, Sweet, and Kiss. Ozzy Osbourne actively participated in the development of the genre. The fact that glam metal was largely based on image has led to the transformation of the combination of glam and pop metal into the extremely mainstream concept of hair metal. Popularity in pop metal was achieved by Bon Jovi, Europe, Cinderella, Poison. After a decline in the development of metal music associated with the outbreak of punk rock in the mid-70s, the famous New Wave of British Heavy Metal NWOBHM, New Wave of British Heavy Metal began in Britain in the early 80s. Second Wave Heavy Metal was based on Black Sabbath, ACDC, Judas Priest. All three bands continued to be active in the 1980s, with ACDC recording a number of records that are considered standards of the genre and Judas Priest of the 80s shaping the basic principles of NWOBHM both in music, harsh, aggressive, heavy sound of two guitars, and in the image. One of the most influential NWOBHM bands was Iron Maiden, who perfected the style, aggressive guitar attack, and heavy metal solo principles to the ideal. Iron Maiden's music was fast and loud, combined with strong and melodic vocals. Often. Heavy metal bands experimented with elements of punk rock in search of their sound. This is how thrash metal was born. The founders and most famous representatives of the style are Metallica. There were also thrash metal bands in the 80s. Bands like Iron Maiden, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. There were also artists who combined pop, metal, R&B, reggae, disco, funk, and punk who did well. Artists such as U2, Bon Jovi, The Eurythmics, etc. Meanwhile, American bands including R.E.M. play with elements of post-punk, balancing introspective lyrics with traditional rock band arrangements. These bands have been called collegiate rock due to their popularity on college radio stations. By the end of the 80s, college rock had become such a lucrative alternative to the mainstream that it was given a new moniker, alternative rock. The first alternative rock bands appeared in the USA in the early 80s. They made attempts to combine the energy of punk rock, the musical foundations of post-punk, folk rock harmonies, and guitar techniques. Alternative rock solidified its cultural position when, in 1988, music magazine Billboard created a new chart for alternative rock, which the publication classified as modern rock. For most music lovers, Terms like modern rock, alternative, and indie are synonymous with describing this popular subgenre. The early 90s was an era in which alternative rock expanded greatly. Dance and party music are already lost. People began to like alternative rock more and artists began to focus more on alternative rock. The music of that era was more abstract oriented. The early 90s also saw a lot of attention paid to grunge music, which is a subgenre of alternative rock. Grunge music has mostly been described as dirty guitar, strong guitar riffs with distortion and feedback. Notable alternative rock and grunge bands included Nirvana, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, and Jane's Addiction 90s. Nirvana's album, Nevermind, was a huge success. These bands were most popular with the mainstream rock audience. In addition to alternative rock and grunge, the early 1990s were also dominated by metal and heavy metal. 
Metallica, Motorhead, and Black Sabbath were popular at the time. Metallica and Guns N' Roses had new hit albums. The Metallica album was called Black Album, and the Guns N' Roses album was called Use Your Illusion. The technology, of course, was new at the time. There were not many new technologies in this era, but there were two major inventions. This era brought the MP3 player and DVD. The MP3 player was smaller than the MP3 player and consisted of digitally compressed music files that were as good as CDs. This of course means that people roamed around listening to music with them, which increased the music's popularity. DVDs, digital versatile discs, are similar to CDs, only much better. They are the same size as CDs but hold 10 times more information. Another important invention was the internet, where the distribution of music became easier, as well as computers with the ability to record. A lot of development happens in the 90s. Heavy metal music is starting to have its own genre. Heavy metal is divided into rap metal, death metal, funk metal, new metal, and rapcore. Hip-hop continues to expand and become famous. Pop music which evolved from rock, continues to thrive because teenagers and bands like the Backstreet Boys, the Spice Girls, etc. are popular. British pop is coming out soon too, and bands like Oasis are doing well. Other musicians such as Green Day, Radiohead, an alternative rock band, and Bon Jovi are also doing well. Rock music has evolved a lot since it began in the 50s. The technology is very modern and there are many genres of rock music. Rock music is still popular today, but along with rock music, other types of music are also popular among different audiences. A lot of music that was introduced many years ago is still popular among people today. Every person has their own taste in music. Some people still like old rock bands, some people like new rock bands, and some people don't like rock bands and prefer different music instead. Teenagers in their earlier years still listen to their music, and the new generation of teenagers mostly listen to pop music, although there are a few exceptions. Today technology is very advanced. New guitars, new drums, good quality music videos, good CDs, good internet downloads, good accessibility, great gigs, phones with music, iPods, good speakers, good headphones, and more. In addition, there is a cafe called Hard Rock Cafe, which only plays rock. Rock music was expected to disappear, but it has evolved since the 1950s and will evolve in time to come.